Hi everyone. So I wanted to talk about Jets and how they added Ruby support to AWS Lambda. So AWS Lambda currently does not support Ruby. I know. Uh, so there are plenty of rumors out, out there actually that AWS is working on it. And um, uh, so one day, hopefully it gets officially released. Uh, I'm hoping for that day. But until then, uh, you have to actually add support to uh, AWS Lambda yourself. Uh, and you do that uh, via a shim. So what's a shim? So a shim is uh, basically you call a Lambda function or you write a Lambda function in a language that's already supported by AWS Lambda. And then that Lambda function calls out to Ruby and then shoves the kind of Ruby results back through that language. So it's kind of like Inception, um, not, not even close. But anyway, so that's basically what uh, Jets does. Jets uses a no shim to add Ruby support to AWS Lambda. And um, the neat thing about how uh, Jets does it is the performance actually. So usually with um, a, a shim, you get some performance overhead because basically you're always paying the penalty of a close start. Uh, but uh, Jets actually has achieved pretty much uh, native performance by, um, by, uh, by uh, I'll explain what, what it's doing, is by taking advantage of how AWS Lambda works basically. So, okay, so here's a quick performance uh, comparison. Here, the first request is just a curl of a Ruby endpoint and that Ruby endpoint uh, returns in uh, 160 milliseconds here. And then the, the Python function, uh, uh, and then the second curl a method here, uh, return curl command uh, calls a natively supported Python function and that returns in 170 milliseconds. Essentially it's the same. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, pretty much at the same speed there. So in order to understand how uh, Jets was able to achieve this, we have to understand a little bit about how AWS Lambda works. And we'll start with the co-star issue. So what's the co-star issue? So, when you call an AWS Lambda function, what happens is AWS Lambda is going to spin up a container, run your function, and then return the results. And uh, there's a penalty involved with uh, actually starting up a container, especially the first time. So the cold start is basically the first time the container starts. So that's what the cold start problem is. When you call your function for the very first time, the container hasn't kind of started yet. So there's overhead associated with that. So it's a little bit slower the first time. So um, there's plenty of people out there talking about the cold start problem. Plenty of people documenting it here. Um, and the cold start actually varies depending on how your AWS Lambda function is configured. So let's say if you're being stingy, which is oh, totally okay. Um, but let's say you've only allocated 120 uh, RAM, uh, uh, megabytes of RAM to your Lambda function. Well, AWS Lambda functions gives you a CPU amount that's proportional to the amount of RAM you give to the function. So if you only have allocated 128 megabytes of RAM, you're gonna get a pretty slow CPU. And so it's gonna be even slower to kill star, it's slower to kind of start up your function and, 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 and run your function even. Uh, so that um, can even run a couple seconds. It, it, it can take some time. Um, so another issue is let's say if you're using Java, which is fine, but the Java JVM uh, has a rather large runtime. Uh, because of this, it can take uh, some even more time to load the JVM. Uh, so um, that uh, that's not great. Uh, worse yet, if you're using AWS Lambda with VPC mode, um, during the Lambda bootstrapping process, what happens is uh, a contain uh, a instance starts up, then a, a Ethernet card is created, and then the Ethernet card is attached to the instance, and then some magic happens so that that uh, Ethernet card is associated with the, your container, and then the AWS Lambda function runs. So that's a couple steps and there's overhead in kind of doing that, like upwards of over 10 seconds sometimes. So uh, that's uh, not great. So this is um, this is why most AWS Lambda developers, so what they do is they actually pre-warm their Lambda functions. And what that is, what pre-warming is, is you just send your Lambda function like a dummy payload and you write your Lambda function uh, to understand the dummy payload and know that it needs to return right away. So that's how they kind of keep uh, that Lambda function warm and then uh, that's how they take advantage of the, what's called the Lambda execution context. So what's the Lambda execution context? Okay, so that's the co-star issue. Lambda execution context is basically that container uh, still running. So uh, AWS Lambda basically ensures that container or, or keeps that container around running. So it avoids that uh, co-star penalty. So that's what the uh, uh, AWS Lambda execution context is. And here are the official uh, words from actually the AWS docs themselves. Uh, this affords a sequential invocations better performance because there's no need to close start. So you, it's just AWS and to keep the container kind of uh, around and keeping it running so you can avoid the performance penalty.
So now that you, uh, now that I've talked about the close start issue and the Lambda execution context, uh, the, reason, uh, the reason I did that was to give you the context and background to now understand how Jets resol resolves the performance issue. Uh, so Jets takes advantage of the Lambda execution context by keeping loading and keeping the Ruby interpreter in memory, right? So repeated requests, don't pay that penalty. And then it's basically just as, as fast as uh, other languages here. Um, eventually Lambda does uh, recycle the containers. Uh, and then uh, when it does, uh, well, Jets also pre-warms uh, the functions. So then uh, it, it keeps it pretty snappy and fast. All right, so let's actually go through a live demo here of, um, of a Jets application right here. So let's load one up, all right? Um, here's the show, okay? This is a, just a CRUD demo that I have, and I'm just clicking around here, and you can see why I'm kind of clicking here. The performance is, is, is you know, it's is, is nice and fast and nice and snappy. And it's, that's because of all what I've said, uh, basically keeping, uh, taking advantage of the Lambda execution, um, Lambda execution context. Okay, new post, let's just create one real quick, submit, okay? And let's go back and there you go. Okay, um, so I think that covers it. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you like videos like this, uh, like it and share it to encourage more content like this and subscribe if you wanna watch more future videos like this. Thanks so much for watching guys, cheers.